Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're excited to talk about document management today. Uh, I'm Paul, and uh, with me is Vanessa, and we've put together a, uh, a, a very informative, I think, practical and fun demonstration of net documents. There's a lot to cover, so we're going to go ahead and dive in. We're going to turn off our webcams just to ensure good bandwidth, and now that you've seen our faces, you can maximize the screen for the demo and, uh, and make sure that you can see all the menu items. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a moment and turn off the webcams and let's dive in. So first, there are, there are many choices with document management and there are different flavors of document management. The first flavor is what we call manual document management, which is basically the Wild West. It is, it's really no document management. It's, it's uh, everybody does their own version of document management. We let users within our organization save documents wherever they feel they're best organized, which generally means they're scattered, uh, they're stored locally, I save them in a certain way, Vanessa saves them in a different way, and so on. And it creates a, a, a very chaotic environment once we get to you know, two or three users. That's definitely not advisable. Dialing it up a notch, now we have firm enforced document management, where we may have a folder, a dedicated client matter folder out on a network drive, on an on-premise server, or even a hosted server. And we, uh, we tell, we mandate to the users that they must save client documents into that folder. But that, that method of document management requires a lot of enforcement because it still is discretionary and people can choose still to save documents wherever they want. If they don't know if a folder exists, they can create one. Um, there aren't drop down menus with controlled multiple choice options. So we oftentimes get folders that are named differently, correspondence or letters or C-O-R-R -R or something else like that. And it makes it difficult, especially over time, to find documents in an environment like that. And once you get over two or three users here, then it becomes uh, quite unwieldy. And it does lack a lot of the features that we're going to talk about today. The next dial up is using practice management software as document management. These typically have very watered down document management features. Um, the the likes of like a Clio or a Cosmolex center base um, and uh, or Time Matters Practice Master that genre of software and you know if you talk to those vendors they'll even tell you what's I think what's very telling is that they link to they integrate directly with programs like Net Document so. And they'll tell you, if you want real document management, robust document management, you really want to look at those solutions and let our software talk to that software. So this isn't an, an ideal, this isn't, uh, an ideal situation um, either. Then we have, and I oftentimes refer to that as dipping our toes into document management. Then we have real document management, which is net documents and the like, there are, there are alternatives. We're going to focus on net documents today. We've, we have uh, created a, um, uh, a structure for this demonstration um, to show, to really, uh, around the, really the problems that organizations experience. So let's, let's, we're gonna do the demo in terms of problems and how net documents solves those problems. So we'll frame the problem and then we'll pop out a PowerPoint into the program and that's really where the substance is and we'll show you the program. The first problem is the I can't find it problem. And Vanessa and I were talking about this. We, we oftentimes refer to this as tapping into the firm's intellectual capital. So you're trying to find a document uh, that somebody drafted uh, a sample document so you don't have to reinvent the wheel Again, tapping into the intellectual capital so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Now, Net Documents does this through a very uh, simple search that I type, I, I call a Google type search, or a more advanced search like what we see here, which is uh, you know more of like a, a Lexus or a Westlaw 
um, uh, you know, advanced query. All right, so let's pop over to Net Documents and show you what that looks like in that interface. So the first thing that we want to point out here that's important is this is a browser, right? So Net Documents is operating within a browser. I'm using Google Chrome, but it works in Internet Explorer for as long as that sticks around. That's on a that's really on its deathbed, so we wouldn't we wouldn't recommend that you go there. But Edge, um, even Safari on a Mac, um, uh, uh, Firefox, right? So I'm in Google. I'm in Google's Chrome now. Here, I am at my homepage. I've already logged in, and we have it tied into our single sign-on. So when we log on to our computer, then all we do is launch our browser hit the net documents icon or if you have a shortcut on your desktop and then you're logged in so we call that single sign-on or federated um, identity right and that's tied into our two-factor authentication so we only have to remember one set of credentials and it's super secure and we're there it makes it very convenient and easy to get to the system once i'm in you can see now this is my home screen and this is the Google type search that I mentioned a moment ago. This is what we're going to demonstrate. We also have an advanced search here where it, it allows me to put together an advanced query where I can use Boolean logic. I'll go back to my home screen. The other thing I do wanna mention about the home screen before we actually run these searches is that at the home screen, you can notice that there are items that have stars next to them. And some of these are matters, and some of these over to the right are documents or forms. So the way that you customize and configure your net document system is you can configure your home page any way you want. So I created these sections here, and Vanessa's as she, she shows you your hers, hers will look different because she she handles different areas than I do. So for me, I handle estate planning, employment law, nursing home litigation, and then I have some key cases over here to the, to the left. Now, the important thing about here is that I am one click away then from all the documents in that particular matter. I don't have to, cl I don't have to you know, click 10 times and type in a query in order to get to the documents or like in a Windows folder structure, drill down, drill down, drill down, drill down, and then finally I'm at the client matter. I don't have to do that. I just one click away from all the documents and all the matters that I frequently access. And so that is that is what is so important and convenient about the home page. Now, when I go up to my quick search at the very top, this is that Google type search, Let's say I know I, dra I, I uh, attended a CLE a couple years ago and it was on voir dire and I want to find all, I want to find that article from that seminar on, on jury selection and I remember it was called Avoid Bald Men and People with Green Socks. Pretty memorable title. So, but I don't know where I saved it. So I'm going to do what we call an everything search here. So the everything searches all the metadata the name of the document and the and this is the, the key really the body of the document the text within the document so here i'm just going to type in bald within 10 words of socks and then hit enter to search and it now it combed through about 2 million documents and it returned back this th these three documents that have those two words within the body now i'm going to single click on this document and it's going to bring me over to the open. There's the document. Now I highlighted the terms here just so you can see within the document itself, these are the terms that we searched. Bald within 10 words of socks. A very important note, this, this PDF was not OCR'd ahead of time, so I just saved it in as an image only PDF and NDOCR, which is a, an, a, a little add-on module, uh, runs in the background and OCR cre essentially creates a text searchable PDF, even though the PDF that I saved in to Net Documents was image only. So that's very, very convenient. We don't have to worry about users OCR wasting time and energy OCRing a bunch of image only PDFs. 
nor do we have to worry about the 10 years of PDFs that we have in the system that were not OCR. So it does, it'll do everything in the past as well. Let's pop back over to Net Documents. And this time, I'm going to do a little different search. I'm looking for a sample non-disclosure agreement. So I'm going to do a name search this time, just the title of the document. And I'm going to type NDA or non-disclosure and hit enter, run the search. And now it will return some hits. Now, I don't want all these options. So over here, I call this the Amazon shopping filter. You know, when you search for toaster ovens and you want Black & Decker stainless steel under $50. So the same idea here on the left, I hit file extensions, just show me Word documents. I could go to author and say, just show me those authors where maybe I'm the author and Vanessa is the author. I'll go ahead and apply that filter, and then here is my result. I can view the document by just simply checking the box, and then over here to the right, the preview pane appears. I can copy and select text out of the viewer. I can do a search within the viewer, uh, or I can just launch the document and open it up. So that is the search engine. That's what we're talking about with the, the, the advanced query or a simple search. We're tapping into the intellectual capital of, the, of, um, of all the work that people have contributed and saved over decades. Next big problem, compliance. We need to be able to save documents into the system very easily. It has to be a one-step process, in other words. Right now, in a Windows folder structure, you hit File Save, and you can lose it anywhere you want because it allows you to browse out and save it anywhere you want. So with Net Documents from a File Save, we just want to be able to jump right into and save the document into Net Documents. So as an example of that, if I let's go let's go back to Net Documents here and let's just launch Microsoft Word. Now, in Microsoft Word, if I open a document or I create a brand new document from scratch, what, I'm, what we're really talking about here is having direct integration from that Save button. So if I, let's say I have my new document here and I hit my Save button, Net Documents pops directly, and now I'm saving it directly into Net Documents. I don't have to browse out. I don't have to save it somewhere and then do an add upload later. That's really important, and we need that direct integration with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Adobe Acrobat, Foxit, Phantom, PDF, all the PDF programs. If we don't have that easy ability to save documents, then uh, documents get scattered. They, they may not be getting backed up because they're saved locally or in my documents. Then, of course, people can't find them. So we want that central repository where everybody saves to that say, central repository, but it has to be easy to save it to that central repository. Otherwise, there's no compliance. All right, next big problem, versions. I want to be able to save documents into the system and track the versions. I want them glued together so when I see it in a list like we see here, I can see that there are four versions. And then if I click on that, that little V4, let's pop back over to Net Documents real quick, and let's go into a matter that has multiple versions of a document. So I'm just going to go back to my home screen and go into the Jeff and Bunny Lebowski matter. And then I want to go into my Drafts folder. And then here is the, the will for Bunny. And when I click on V4, it brings me to a list of all four versions. I can see who saved the document in, when it was saved. I can see a preview of it. I can jump back into any one of them that I want. I can do a comparison between the two, right? And I don't engage in weird naming schemes like final, 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 final. I really mean it this time. It's always called proposed order. And it's going to be version one, two, three, four, five, and up to an infinite number of different versions that are tracked. Okay, so versioning is a really strong feature and an important feature of document management. All right, next, 
we're going to shift over and talk about a really big topic and we're going to switch presenters. I'm going to let Vanessa jump in and demonstrate um, email management and collaboration. So Vanessa, if you want to go ahead and take over and be the presenter, that would be great. Yes, thank you, Paul. There Paul, we go. Can you can see my screen. Yes. Great. So with email management in Net Documents, it's simple. So, so simple, Paul. I love how we can just look at an email and using their um, Indie Mail prediction panel, I can just simply select this email and then file this email into NetDocs without having to go anywhere. Now, up here in this Indie Mail panel that we're looking at, it's giving me predictions based on the properties of this email, the to, the from, the subject, and even looking at the, um, the content and the attachments of this email. So here, I can see that the prediction is telling me this is where I should file the email. And to do so, all I have to do is click on the checkbox and then click on file. And that's how simple and easy it is to file emails inside Net Documents. Now they also do have folder mapping as well to where you can continue to file those emails um, like you normally would do if you were organizing your emails through Outlook folders. So here I do have a folder uh, for Marty and I can simply just right click on it and then map this folder to ND to where now anything that I add into this Marty, Marty folder, it would also sync into Net Documents. But these are just the inbound um, or in, incoming emails. It also even allows you to even uh, save emails that are outbound as well. So I do have the ND Mail Prediction Panel right here that I can pop open. And I'm going to go ahead and send an email to Paul and then ask him about um, next week's meeting. And then there you can see that prediction as, as well has also changed. But what's nice about Net Documents is that out of the box, they also give you a magic wand where we put, uh, where I can navigate to show you what the India Attach um, does. So India Attach allows you to bring in documents from Net Documents. I'm going to go ahead and add in these few files in here and then also insert these documents into the email. Now with this magic wand, we are going to um, click on the edit button. I'm going to give you three powerful tools to where I can reorganize. I can also and also rename this. But I'm also I also have the power to even PDF these documents all within Outlook and then click on OK. So with this magic wand, I've reorganized, renamed, and it's also going to PDF these documents, these Word documents. So just imagine and think about how many steps it would take or how many applications it would take for you to even do that outside of Net Outlook. So here, it's done all my magic, but it's not, it's, it doesn't stop right there. I also even have a zip wand as well to where I can take all those attachments and then put it into a zip file. And then from there, I can click on send. But with this little flashing light right there, it, it's kind of giving me a gentle reminder saying, hey, Vanessa, you forgot to file this email. So I'm going to go ahead and file this email and then send it off to Paul. Okay. Going back into my inbox, I also have um, the power to not just file those emails, but I also can just file attachments. And I'm going to show you how to do that by using a simple drag and drop feature and utilizing their navigation panel. So with this navigation panel, what's neat about this is that it actually brings you the whole net documents experience into Outlook without having to move anywhere outside of Outlook. Okay. So with this email from Sarah, I have these DeLorean prints. I'm going to go ahead and just simply drag and drop it into Net documents right here. So I filed it into a folder called for Marty to review. Okay. Looking at my in my inbox again, I can see that there's this email from Ted. Now, how do I file this email? Again, 
I can simply click on it, click on file, and it's filed. But because Ted is also within my firm, Ted will also know that I have filed this email simply because of this little tiny but mighty global uh, filing indicator. So this little check mark will also show up on Ted's Outlook indicating that this email has been filed already, so he doesn't have to file anything else. Okay. And now, Paul, what's our next slide? Collaboration. So go ahead and uh, you can dive in. We don't have to switch back. Um, do you want to go ahead and talk about collaboration? Yes, thanks. So with the collaboration efforts of NetDocuments, it's also, again, super simple and easy. Everything um, inside a matter um, is, is one central place for you to access your document, also even um, have a chatting feature with internal or external users, and also create portals for external users, and also even create binders. So here, looking at a matter or a workspace uh, for the Martin McBride DeLorean patent, I have access to all of my documents. I also have all these other tabs up here um, that are features of net documents. So Collab Spaces is actually a, a way for you to create in a, a portal for those external users or internal users that do not have access to this space right here. I already have a portal open for Marty already. So any document that I share inside here for Marty, he would, be act, he would have access to as well. And he would also be able to share files by clicking the add button. And I would be able to review those files and even collaborate with him if we we're both using uh, Microsoft Online. Okay. Going back to the workspace, I want to show you Threads. Threads is actually a way for, um, is a communication tool um, add-on piece from NetDocuments to where you can see here, these are all different chats. Now with these chats, with this chatting feature, I'm able to create new threads or new discussions. And you can see here inside this thread that I do have um, two external users that can access this thread. And you can see how Mar McFly is there. So I can send him a message and call him out and say, hey, Marty, did you get the documents I sent last week? And then from Marty's end, he would get a message um, through either his mobile phone, if he downloads the application, or even an email um, reminder saying, hey, Vanessa just sent you an email or a, a text message. Go ahead and go check. Okay. Now, another item that also that works into the collaboration efforts that ties it all in from email to glass faces to threads, there is set, bind, uh, set builder. Set builder allows you to take documents, whether it resides inside net documents or even outside of net documents, meaning on shared drives or even on your local machine, take all those documents and bind them together. And these are, um, these are best usually when you know when you're creating binders or notebooks. And that way you can just take all those files, put it into a PDF, an electronic PDF format, and then be able to share it or send it off. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into this set that I've already created. Um, and you can see here that it does have a cover page, it has headers in here. And it also has the documents that I've already pulled in from the workspace or from my local machine. Now those that are in blue indicates that those are actual documents that I've already brought in. These items right here, the sketch in the Wikipedia, these are documents that I'm waiting for to be brought in. So I remember that I had already filed a sketch that Sarah had already sent me. So I can go and click on edit to edit the set, click on sketch, and then I can set a document to this item. So since I've already added the item into Net Documents, I can go ahead and select the document from the workspace. And so from here, I can just go ahead and look and see where that die item is at. And I did not add it there. Maybe it's here. Nope, it's not there either. Uh, I believe it is probably here. And there it is. I can go ahead and link it in. And it's now 
turned into blue to which now it's created that document. Now, on the other hand, if I have the document on my local machine, I'm going to go ahead and share my folder that has that Wikipedia document. And so from here, locate the Wikipedia document, I can just simply drag and drop into the window. And then it'll also save that Wikipedia document into net documents and also add it to the set. Now to create that set or create that one finalized PDF, all I have to do is click on generate binder. It's going to prompt me to see if this, this is, this is the cover page that I want to set it to, and this is the name and also generate an index page for me. And all I have to do is click on generate. It's going to take all those documents that I've already have on my, again, in my side of my workspace and from my local machine and create that one set. And here, there's that one finalized PDF. And now in SignNet Documents, I can now see a preview of this one set that I just created. And just give it a moment so it can think real quick. And there's my cover page and there's my index. Now keep in mind that also, if you're looking at this inside a, um, a PDF viewer, it does create bookmarks for you too. So that way you can just quickly jump to those rest of the pages without having to scroll. And that is collaboration efforts um, inside Net Documents. Back to you, Paul. Okay, excellent. So we're going to just switch back to me being the presenter. And Vanessa, can you just verify that we're seeing a slide called collaboration? Yes, I can see it. All right, excellent. So uh, the next big feature that we wanted to talk about or problem is remote access. And we know we're feeling that issue right now quite um, uh, quite uh, heavily with the, with the pandemic and COVID-19 going on. Um, now, suffice it to say that because this is cloud-based, this is a, a pure SaaS solution, access to the documents from home, from a hotel, from any device that has internet connectivity, is going to give your, you and the rest of your users the access to all the documents within your, your, uh, your organization. So um, what we've primarily been focused on is the desktop uh, or a laptop computer. What we haven't talked about is mobile access through a, a phone, a smartphone or a tablet. So the nice thing about Net Documents is that it has an app for the iPhone or the iPad, so uh, the iOS ecosystem, as well as Android devices. So we have, and you know, we can't ignore that because statistically, uh, about you know, 80, 90 percent of those lawyers with tablets have iPads. So it's quite a few t Android tablet users, but there are a lot of Android phone users. So uh, there is an application available for both of those. What we're really trying to do with the, with the tablet or uh, you know, a handheld mobile device like a tablet or a smartphone is we wanna get away from keeping the parallel paper file. So many law firms today and legal departments still maintain a paper file. We wanna get away from that. We know now more than ever with this pandemic that paper files don't work, right? When we work virtually, only one person has access to the paper file. And you're, du you're duplicating the time uh, spent if you have to save something electronically and then turn around and maintain a paper file as well. So instead of carrying that paper file in your briefcase to court or to a client meeting, instead what we want to do is carry a tablet. Right, and it could be an iPad or it could be an Android based tablet, like I said. So, what I want to do now is I want to bring my iPad over to the screen. And, Vanessa, can you just verify that you can see that? Can you are you seeing the iPad? Yeah, I can see your iPad. 
All right, excellent. So uh, you'll see in the, in the bottom dock, that line of icons in the bottom of the screen, the third icon from the left is net docs. And so when I am out and about on my iPad, I just open up my smart cover, I flip the lid and I tap that button. And within a second, I have all my documents available in net docs. So there's no negotiating Wi-Fi because I either tether with my phone or I have a cellular data account built into my tablet. So it's open lid, tap, and I'm in. And that's, that's what I want. On my home screen, you can see I have all those sections we were just looking at a moment ago. In fact, uh, if we just scroll down a little bit, there's the Lebowski matter that we just looked at. And then within the Lebowski matter, we have our different folders and filters, as well as that collaboration space that, that uh, Vanessa just demonstrated uh, a moment ago. Now, what I wanna do in this particular example is go into drafts, and then I'm just going to click on the Bunny Lebowski will that we showed you a moment ago. And then here, this, and this is what's really impressive and sets it apart from all other document management systems, the direct integration with Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. When I click the button up here at the top, the pa little paper icon with the pencil, I get an option to edit the document using Word or edit the document using Word as a new version. Let's do the second one. I'm gonna tap on the middle option. It opens the document in Microsoft Word directly. So it, down, it checks the document out, downloads it onto the tablet. From here, I can use my inking functions of Word and my iPad, and I'm using my stylus, my Apple Pencil, and I'm just gonna mark it up. I can cross, you know, cross out text. I could, you know, of course, I could just click inside of text and I can add text and I can delete text as well. So I'll just go ahead and delete that. Right now, when I'm done editing the document, the only thing I have to do is click on this little back button in the upper right hand corner. See that there where that square is right above that. I just hit that back key and now it checks the document back in and saves it as the next version. So we're going to pop back over to Net Documents, and then let's just refresh this, let's go back, and then go back into Drafts, and we're going to see that now that says version five. See that, version five. So that, it doesn't get any easier than that. With other systems, you have to download the document, it's saved locally on the iPad, and then you have to upload it back in. It's a multi-step process. It's very clunky. Here, I just, I just want access to all my documents. In fact, there's a search screen, a search um, uh, field in the upper left-hand corner that allows me to do that Boolean logic searching that I, just, that I demonstrated a moment ago. All right, we'll go back to that one in a second. Now, when I click, I'm going to go into GoodNotes, which is a note-taking app. This is my daily journal that I, that I use to, to plan my days. Now, these, these could be client notes, it could be anything. Notice that I'm just using my pen and I'm just, I'm gonna type in Vanessa here in the lower right hand corner. Now to save these notes into net documents, I only have to type, I have to hit my action button here, and then I export this as a PDF, and then I get my save to net documents icon here. I'm now asked what matter do I want to save it in? I want to save it in the Jeff and, Le and Bunny Lebowski matter, and it's in it's a note or memo and upload. Okay, and I'm just gonna add this to the new document. It uploads the document in, successful. Now we're gonna pop back over to Net Documents. And in my search up here, I'm going to go into my everything search. And I don't know if, if you noticed, but let's just come back here for a moment. In my notes here, 
I have call roofer, and then I have a phone number. Maybe I don't know where I saved this document, but I know that I had some handwritten notes. So in my everything field, I'm just gonna search for roofer and hit go. There are my results and take a look. This is really quite amazing if you think about it. It found my handwritten text in a note from Notability or GoodNotes that I saved into deck do, uh, net documents directly, right? And now I can do a full text search for handwriting of my handwritten notes. It's actually it's fantastic, right? So oh. this type of this type of mobility is really quite sophisticated. Vanessa, Paul, was there something you wanted to add there? Yeah. Actually, this is Karen. Um, we were not able to see the actual save operation from GoodNotes. Would you mind doing it one more time, just so that we can see the um, oh, yeah. the process? Yeah, absolutely. So here, can you see good notes now? I'm in a I, I'm in a document. Yes, we can see the good notes. It okay. was the actual save functions that we weren't able to see. So the uh, I hit the share button in the upper left hand corner. Oh, you know what? It's not showing up there. Let's uh, hold on a second. Let's see if we can let's see if we can get this here. Ah, there we go. Now, yep, now we can okay. see it. <laughs> so uh, it was only mirroring the page itself. So now when I hit the, the save, okay, export this page, and then PDF, export, and then now I have my save to NetDocs option. From here, I can navigate, I can, I can select a specific workspace, or I can go to the Lebowski matter, and then I just pick, I want it to go into notes and then upload in the lower right hand corner. Okay? That was great, thank you. You bet. Again, what we're trying to do is get away from carrying the paper file. We really wanna carry our tablet and give us access to the documents that we need. This eliminates the need to maintain paper files. Right, because the, one of the primary reasons why we still maintain a paper file is because when we go to court or we go meet with a client, we go out of the office, we don't have our computers with us and we need the file. So now I can carry my tablet and I have access to all 2 million plus documents at, at a you know, couple clicks and, and a couple seconds later, I'm at all of my documents. All right, next, a couple, couple, uh, I think, big features, right? But we're going to just go over these quickly. Internal security. So with net documents, I, I need the ability to create ethical walls and create security around different cabinets. So if, a, if we bring on an attorney that, uh, from a lateral hire and we need to create an ethical wall around a couple clients, we can do that. And, you, and that's, a, that's a cardinal feature of document management. It's very easy to do. And then within its security panel, you can see summaries of you know, what, what ethical walls exist for these certain people, right? And that's something that historically is really difficult to manage in a Windows folder structure through Active Directory. Um, so ethical walls and other security too, you just want to lock a document, a template, so only certain people can, can edit those documents, um, uh, and, and, but everybody can access those templates uh, in order to, to, to draft a, maybe a, you know, a model non-disclosure agreement or, uh, or, or, or respond to a set of interrogatories or create um, a set of interrogatories. Audit trail. I want to be able to right click on a document and see specifically what Ted has done to this document, when Ted edited this document, or all users, right? So in any document within the system, we'll have an audit trail history associated with it. So we know exactly when it was first saved, when it was next saved, when it was downloaded or emailed out of the system external security. And this one's a big one. This is probably, Vanessa and I were talking about this, uh, uh, preparing for this last week. And in our experience, 
email is probably one of the, I'd say that one of the top three reasons pe why people uh, seek out a document management system. They need a way to save and then retrieve those emails very easily so they're not stuck in individual inboxes. And then security, right? And these are, this is just a very quick snapshot of just some, not even all, but some of the popular security compliance um, certifications that Net Documents has achieved. To do something like this under for your own servers under your own roof would cost millions of dollars. And you know, Net Documents spends an enormous amount of money building and maintaining world class security and getting these certifications um, and recertified on an annual basis. So we see all the time clients of law firms tell their law firms, listen, if you don't, if you don't have a cloud-based solution that's HIPAA compliant and SOC 2 compliant, we're going to have to go to another firm, right? So this gets you around having to spend an enormous amount of money on trying to get these type of certifications yourself. Um, these are all, all these documents are stored in the cloud in redundant data centers with world-class security. Your digital law library. You need to be able to centralize your templates and forms and your model research. So instead of people saving things into individual folders or out on desktops um, and, when, and where nobody has access to that intellectual capital, uh, you can easily use net documents as a knowledge base to store and retrieve those templates, those forms, the model research, right? So imagine that physical library in your office where you have sections of certain treatises and notebooks with forms. Instead of having the physical office, you have a digital office that's, that is accessible by any, anyone uh, and anywhere. Uh, so from home, from the courthouse, and so on. Integration with practice management solutions and time billing and accounting systems. Net Documents has an extensive set of, of a list of practice management and time billing and accounting solutions. These are just some of kind of the big ones, but um, uh, what we want ultimately is to be able to, when the matter is set up in uh, in elite or in Juris or in whatever solution you're using, it's automatically set up in net documents. And then when I go to that matter in that system, I can go to the documents tab and I can see all the documents that are stored within net documents. And some of them are a little bit more robust than others where you could actually run searches from within their application uh, as well. And then finally, Direct integration with copiers and scanners. We want to be able to load a document into a desktop scanner like we see on the left. This is a picture of the Fujitsu ScanSnap, probably the most popular desktop scanner in the world. I can load a document on that, in that scanner, hit the blue one touch button, and then scan the document and save it into net documents very easily. It's not a multi-step process. And likewise, on the big copier scanner uh, fax machine in your workroom. I can load the document there, use the interface, the computer interface that we see there on the touch screen, select the desired matter and scan and save the document directly in. So there, there are integration paths with, uh, with scanning solutions. The, that completes kind of the, the big, really, I mean, almost all the, the major features, uh, definitely all the major features, and really digging in deep into some of them. Um, what we want to do, I want to turn it back over to Karen now. And if you do have questions, Karen's going to describe and give you some instruction on how to reach out to us. I want to personally thank you for attending today, and uh, hopefully you picked up some good information. So Karen, uh, go ahead and take it away. Great, thank you, and thank you, Vanessa, too. Um, NetDocuments is amazing. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Great job. 
Uh, and thanks to all of you for attending. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that are out there. Um, some of them look like they're gonna require some uh, lengthy responses, so we'll get to those offline. Um, but I do want to uh, thank you all for being here. And if you are intrigued by uh, today's demonstration and want to learn more, uh, or if you just have some of those lingering questions, I encourage you to connect with one of the experts at Affinity. You're certainly welcome to uh, send me an email. With, there's my contact information um, or respond to um, the follow-up. Our team will be sending those out uh, with today's recording and the slide deck. So you can just reply to that email and we'll do the rest. Um, as always, I hope you'll join us again soon. We do have some great new sessions coming up that you won't want to miss. Uh, you can find all of those details at affinityconsulting.com slash webinars. And we're also starting a new virtual symposium in June all about people and productivity. Uh, we're calling it the Quick Hit Series because each little mini session will be only about 20 minutes long and you'll walk away with quick actionable uh, hits to make you more productive immediately. Uh, the link is in the slide deck here, and uh, we'll also include that in the follow-up email. Thank you again for joining us today. Um, please do share your feedback with us on the survey that follows, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>